since we have completed most of the basics so let's try some uh, examples so these are some problems from our textbook Floyd digital fundamentals so first let's try to design these encoders and decoders okay so encoders and decoders uh, they are very important combinational circuits so encoders basically takes data in one format and converts it into other format decoder also basically does the same thing it takes data from one format and converts to uh, some other format so yeah effectively they are same thing encoders and decoder so input data format is something and output data format is some other thing so here uh, look at this example so again this is an abstract view uh, this is our circuit we are going to describe this circuit basically so this circuits input it is coming from a keyboard and the keyboard we will be entering uh, some numbers in decimal format so when we press 9 here this button is actually connected to this input of our circuit same way this 8 is connected to this one 7 is connected to this one so on and so forth so what should happen is when I press 9 the output of this circuit should be the corresponding binary of 9 which is 1 0 0 1 so if I press 2 the output should be 0, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth. So very straightforward. So let's try to design this one. So anyway, the abstract view is directly given here. You can see it has 10 inputs, each representing uh, one decimal digit. The output, okay, uh, since it is only from 0 to 9, of course, you know, we need only 4 bits to represent it. Okay, so let's go ahead and design that one. Okay. It look so module let's call this uh, decimal to binary encoder the input is coming in decimal format and output is in binary format right so let's call it decimal to binary encoder now the input you can declare an array of 10 or you can declare 10 separate input representing 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's do something like that so that it is more evident. So I have input 1. Same way we will make other inputs also. Okay, same way output 4 bits. Better to declare it as a single array of 4 bits because that's representing a single binary number, right? So output binary number what should be the width 4 bits so we'll write 3 down to 0 I'm going to use behavioral modeling so this will be coming from an always block so I'm directly writing it like that okay so as we mentioned before we can say always at star begin end and let's go ahead and write it. So we are going to use if else if cases. So we have if one binary num is combinational. Okay. For tick P0001. You can either write like this or you can write for tick D1 simply like this also. Both will work. Let's write like this. Now we just write for all the cases using else if else if two. Okay, so we have written all the cases. Now all the input possibilities we have covered. So this else condition that will never happen. Okay, this else means some input change other than any input that we have listed here. But we have listed all the input. But still, let's put that else case here, uh, and we can just say 
output will be 0, 0, 0, 0. This is redundant. Even if you don't write it, in this case, there won't be any latch inference. Okay, so we have done with our design and we can simulate and see it. So let me create a new folder and put everything there. Let's call it practice problems. And let's call it decimal to binary encoder. Change directory. Since this is a new folder, let me create the work library and we log decimal to binary encoder. Okay, there is error else if seven and here there is a spelling mistake. Okay. Yeah, everything works. In the compilation work dot decimal to binary encoder. Okay, so let's try three. So I'm making three as one. Everything else should be zero. So one, two, four, two, zero. Two also zero. And three as one. And everything else. As and when we run, you can see the output is 0011, which is the binary equivalent of 3. So you can try other ones also, so everything will work. Now the important thing to note here is physically what happens if you press two buttons at the same time. Suppose I pressed five and six at the same time. What will come in the output? Okay, so that depends upon how you wrote your if else if condition. So here it is written four else if five. So four is written before five. That means four has higher precedence or 5. So if you press 4 and 5 at the same time, the output will correspond to the binary of 4. 0 I have written at the end. So if you press 0 and any other number, that number will come instead of 0. Okay. So this if else if condition that physically implements a priority encoder. Internally, we call it as a priority encoder. So the conditions that you write uh, before has higher priority or the conditions you write later. So if you quickly see how this if else if will be converted into a truth table internally, uh, that will be interesting. So we have input 1 to 0 and this is the output, right? So when we have truth table, this is how it is going to look like. So truth table, we have inputs here, we have outputs here and our inputs are our inputs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay, let's put here 9 and 0. These are our inputs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. This became extra alpha. Outputs, we have an array. What is it? 3 down to 0 binary num. So in truth table, that will be like b of 0, b of 1, b of 2, and b of 3. These are the four outputs. So our first if condition, it is written if 1, this is the binary number. That means if this input is 1, it doesn't matter what are the other inputs. So in the truth table, they will be all marked as don't care. Output is 1. That is 0, 0, 0, 1. Then if 2, 
So when I say else if two here, that implicitly says this one is zero, this input is zero, and this input is one. So in the truth table, that will be like this should be zero, and this is one. Then all these are don't care. Then the output will be zero zero one zero. So for three, it will be zero zero one. All don't care. And this will be 0, 0, 1, 1. This is how the truth table will look like. The implementation tool, uh, he will be building this truth table internally for building that circuit when it is implemented physically. So your if else if will be translated to a truth table like this. And here you can see it is a priority encoder. This is what we call as a priority encoder. This guy has higher priority over all of them. Now this one has higher priority over all of them except this one because this is 0 and so on and so forth. So here, when you use if else if, the order in which you write the code matters uh, because it's a priority encoder. So I hope uh, this one is clear. Let's do one more example. The next one, the decoder circuit. So this is a binary to seven segment decoder, seven segment display decoder. Okay, so when you come to the lab, you will see this. Or you might have already seen this thing already, right? Uh, in many home appliances also, wherever you want to display some number, we will have these small chips uh, using which you can represent any number from 0 to 9. So the aim is, again, we have a circuit here. This time we are calling it as a decoder. Uh, the input to the circuit is in binary format. And the output from the circuit, okay, you can see there are seven wires coming from here. And each wire is connected to each segment here. So the each segment that you are seeing here, physically they are LEDs. So if this wire is connected to this segment and whenever this wire drives high that segment will glow if the wire drives zero that segment will be off so you won't see it so that is one kind of display the reverse is also possible in some other kind of displays but let's think like that each wire here seven wires they are connected to each uh, segment here each of the segment is an led whenever the wire drives high led will turn on whenever the wire drives low LED will turn off. So our aim is to build this uh, decoder circuit which converts this binary number to this 7 output. So of course you have to represent again from 0 to 9. So our binary number will be represented using 4 bits and the outputs are 7 bits. So let's quickly make our module declaration. I'll write it in a new source code. We have module binary to 7 segment and our input is a binary number, 4 bits, so let's write like 3 down to 0, uh, binary in, and output, they are 7 outputs, okay, so usually each segment here, we will call it like A, B, C, D, you can take the data sheet of 7 segment display, uh, and you can see it. Okay, so physically this is how this chip will look like and you can see each segment has a name. So this one is A, this is B, this is C, D, E, F, G. Okay, and the chip, it has pins which are connected to each of these segments also. So those pins, they are also called by the same name. Okay, so let's follow this one, A to G. Okay, so we'll say like output A output p again i'm going to try some from an always block so we'll write output reg a output reg p etc okay so module declaration is done now let's write the code begin combination so always at star uh, begin end and we can again use if else if so let's look at the cases Okay, so here I have drawn those seven segments and let's give the segments the name A, B, C, D, E, F and G is the middle one. So the blue one is basically indicating uh, segment is off and red is indicating it is on. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G like this. So under what all conditions this segment should turn on. So we have to look at the numbers here. So if it is zero, it should turn on. If it is 2, if it is 3, if it is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. In all these cases, 
this A segment should turn off. So let me go ahead and write it. So how we will write if binary in is tick D, what are the condition? 0 to 3. Okay, 0 or okay. So in C, you know we have bitwise order operator and logical order operator. You have to write these two vertical lines to represent logical or. In Verilog also, same thing is there. You can write two vertical lines. But in Verilog, it doesn't matter whether you are writing bitwise OR or this logical OR because physically, this will be implemented using OR gates. So whether you write this one or this one, same thing will be getting implemented. So I usually prefer a single line here also. So we can say equal to equal to 0 OR 2 OR 3 OR 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 okay. or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 what would happen? our A should be driven 1 any of this happens, A should become 1. Now here this else case is very important. That means if the input is not any of this, this segment should not glow. Okay. So simply writing this if is not enough, you should write else and say A equal to 1 tick B0. Otherwise there will be a latch inference. So practically if you first make A0, then if you try to display 1, since you don't have that else case, okay, the input has changed, and you haven't told if one have if one comes, what should be the state of A? You haven't mentioned that means A should hold the previous value. So A will remain high, and that segment will grow. So your logic is wrong. So you should write else case here. If any other number comes, that segment should be off. Now you can follow the same logic and write the condition for all the segments. Okay, so we have completed. So let's save it as binary to seven segment. Uh, should be very careful if you are copy pasting code as I was making mistake. You should change the left hand signal always. And uh, you can directly write uh, tick t zero here. Maybe I didn't show this before without specifying the size. So before we were always writing 4 tick D0, but for signals for which you have already declared the size like this, 4, even if you don't write 4 there, the tool will automatically find out what is the width. Okay, so writing tick D0 and 4 tick D0 both are fine here. And here I didn't write anything. So if you don't specify anything, the value is taken in decimal. So these are all decimal values and the width also the tool will automatically calculate. Again, not very good design practice, uh, but now I am cutting the corners, right? But ideally, you should write like this, okay? Now, simulation, you can try it out. Uh, this should be working. Let me just compile once to make sure there are no errors. Okay, so there are no syntax errors, so it should be working fine. 
So I hope with this you have a better idea of how to design comb data circuits using behavioral modeling. Okay, so more details we will discuss in the next video. You can try more examples from the textbook. Again, a uh, lot of circuits are there. This is our multiplexer which we already tried. And in the practice section also there will be many more circuits in the later chapters. So you can try all of them uh, to describe in very